that Indian son of a bitch. Allow me to introduce you to Rob's very cunning plan. Step one.
There has to be hope. There has to be remedy. There has to be fun and peace in abundance. Now, step two of my coming play is very simple. People in the Law Society can name their society. So I'm going to establish a society, a free man society. Free man society, Canada. Free man society, Canada chapter. Because this society is not going to be limited to Canada. No, it's a going to be global. It's the free man society with different chapters. Canada chapter and you watch. Three months from now, there's going to be the UK chapter, the New Zealand chapter, the Australian chapter. There's going to be chapters globally. And the thing is, there's not a damn thing you're going to be able to do about it. We have every right in the world to associate and to assemble. And that's all I'm going to do is exercise that very simple fundamental right. That's step two. For all have I very cunning plan. Now, I know you, the people in the law society and the courts are not going to like this. Government's going to hate it. You're going to try to stop us and you're going to try, I'm pretty sure I know what you're going to do. You're going to try to denigrate the entire movement by using things, words like anti, you'll call us anti-government when we're actually just pro-good government. You'll call us detaxers when we're actually just want to be stock owners in, and holders in our country. You'll try to label us as uh, malcontents or dissenters. You're going to try to get people to think that we're a bunch of wing nuts. Maybe we're a cult. Maybe we're... Ooh. You'll probably go and find people in this movement who are the least educated about it and the most angry, and then interviewing them, you'll try to put this whole movement in an ugly light. But it's not going to work, and I'll tell you why. See, this isn't going to be a localized movement. It's not just going to be some hippies in the Kootenai. We're going to have people in our society, fishermen from, from St. John's, Newfoundland, to street people in Victoria. Oil workers, welders, electricians, farmers, truckers, fathers, mothers, all across the country. This is where people are going to be looking at this and saying, hmm, I think I want to be a member of that society. You try denigrating that, they're going to know you're talking about them. And that's just going to piss them off because it's going to highlight what kind of deceptive people you really are. You're not going to be able to lie to them and they aren't going to believe it. You're going to fail miserably in trying to stop us from the society, but you're going to have to try. My country. This is my country. Now part two of my very cunning little plan involves these people and people like them throughout Canada. See the thing is what, I've, what I found in my research is that anyone can hire anyone else to be a peace officer to preserve and maintain the public peace. Now the good people of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they are peace officers but they are also policy enforcement officers for the corporate entity known as Canada and when they're under contract with the province of British Columbia they are uh, enforcing the policies of that corporate entity as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new peace officer force. Canada is not going to get a police state, it's going to become a peace state. Our society, the Freeman Society Canada chapter, we're going to be hiring our own peace officers. They're going to be similarly trained and equipped and armed as the